All right, let's talk about a guy who, if you don't remember, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromora was a player who many thought, in fact, pretty much everyone thought was going to be a first-round pick and maybe even a top half of the first-round pick, ends up falling to pick 52. Later on in the second round is when the Browns finally picked him up, which was a big surprise. He apparently had uh, some sort of heart condition, which is why teams were a little bit more scared to draft him, but uh, it hasn't really affected his play so much. So, uh, you know, first year kind of looked like the Browns had gotten a steal with Awusa Koromora, but... I really haven't heard much people even talk about him in the year two, so I wanted to do a film study and really just dive into how well he had as a year two and where are we at right now with JOK. So first, let's start off with this play, uh, the play you see on the screen. So it's a zone coverage, and you see the zone that he is supposed to cover. It's the one that is in white right there. You have a player who's going to start off blocking and eventually get into that uh, zone. So that's the guy JOK is going to eventually have to cover. But again, it could be a little bit tricky, right? You have to pay attention to the quarterback. You have to realize that the player who starts off blocking is not going to be blocking for the whole play and pick him up. So there's just, you know, there's things he has to notice here. And right when this play begins, you will notice that he notices this. He pays attention and realizes who he has to cover. However, you know, uh, Josh Allen still feels okay about making this throw. There is a bit of a bubble. And again, they're trying to get to the 41 yard line on this play. It's a second down and 10. So you don't have to, but still, or excuse me, not second down and 10, but second down. So, uh, you know, I can understand why Allen would make this throw. But again, you see JOK does a great job of, you know, gave himself a little bit of space, but the second the ball was thrown, he runs in and makes the immediate tackle on Dawson Knox. So really good stuff from, uh, you know, Owusu Koromora there to be able to do that. And these are the kind of things I thought he did pretty consistently. Uh, I really did. I mean, again, you saw the athleticism, you know, guys, a linebacker who many thought could play safety. I mean, he's, you know, kind of in that weird situation of he's just like a great athlete who you want around the ball. But here's just a great example of him making a splash play and using that athleticism to do so. I mean, watch him be able to just, you know, run untouched off the edge. But there was an offensive lineman who was supposed to pick him up. He just never got over there as Awusa Koromora was able to explosively get down the field and make an immediate tackle because he does have that athleticism. And, you know, the whole thing is, hey, you can maybe teach some other stuff. You can't teach athleticism. And so when you get a guy who has it and has the other stuff, I think you feel pretty good about it. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not trying to sit here and say that, like, he was just a superstar uh, linebacker last year. I thought he was a good linebacker and certainly had superstar moments uh, for Cleveland. I think that might be a fair thing to say. But a play like this, it's going to be... So the way it works is they're going to double team uh, an interior defensive lineman and then one of the offensive linemen is going to get off that double team and move up to block Jeremiah Owusu-Koromora. That's the way this play is designed to work. Well, right when it begins, they're able to, you know, get up to that next level pretty well. This was a good block by the Chargers. And Wilson Koromora, again, the one knock you definitely can say about him that is a reasonable knock is that for a linebacker, he is not the biggest of linebackers. The guy's 221 pounds and 6'2". So, again, that's not necessarily uh, small for an NFL player and certainly not small for a person, but, you know, for linebackers, usually, even you know, uh, even if you have 10 more pounds on you, that's still kind of on the small side, or that, that's maybe a little bit more normal, would be 230, so he's definitely on the small side, and so him getting pushed out of the way is something that's going to happen a little bit. As you see, he's going to come back in and then, you know, tries to make a move, actually ends up grabbing the face mask, isn't able to make that tackle, so kind of got knocked out of the way a little bit, and then, you know, also grabbed the face mask, which wasn't ideal. Listen, the second part of the play, I'm not too concerned about. You're trying to grab onto something, accidentally grab the face mask, it is what it is, but again... Can he get pushed aside a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. But I have to say, not as much as you would think. Not as much as you would think from a 220-pound linebacker. Like, here's an example of what he can do in the running game. He can be a very effective run defender, where what's going to happen is it's going to be a guard who's going to just move up to the second level to block him one-on-one. -on -one. There's no double team involved. This is just a pure one-on-one -on -one block, and it's going to be a run to the offense's left, which is towards the right side of the screen, and JOK is currently lined up towards the left side of the screen. So right off the bat, if you're a running back, you're not really worried about JOK impacting this play. However, as you see, the guard is able to get over and he just, you know, 
JOK was able to sidestep him, again, use the athleticism and footwork to get around, and that's the other side of the coin. You know, it's interesting. I actually did uh, sort of a study on it. I was just curious about what size tends to work better if you're a linebacker. Are you better off if you're a smaller linebacker, sort of medium-sized, or a bigger linebacker? And what was kind of surprising to me, I, I would have guessed sort of the average size would do the best, but it was actually the opposite. That one did the worst. The ones that tended to do pretty well were were either the bigger linebackers or the smaller linebackers. And I think it kind of makes some sense. Bigger linebackers can win with size. Smaller linebackers can win with speed and footwork. And if you're kind of in the middle, then you can't really win consistently with either one of those things unless you're happening to play a weaker linebacker or, excuse me, unless you're happening to play a weaker offensive lineman or a slower offensive lineman. So while JOK might have a weakness, the reality is pretty much everyone has a weakness. It's very rare you're going to find uh, one of those linebackers that's 245 pounds and also has insane feet work. Uh, like every now and then that happens, uh, but very rare. And again, I just feel like um, stuff like this, sometimes he just makes these reads so quickly. And this is an example of it where it's going to be, you know, you see the concept on your screen. Zone coverage that the Browns are in. You see the zone that JOK is supposed to be covering. And the way the concept works is really kind of designed to pick on JOK a little bit. You have three players who are going to eventually get all the way over outside the numbers to the offense's right. And so because of that, there's only two players currently lined up to cover that area of the field. Who is the closest player who can come over and make a play? It's Awusa Koromora, because again, the safety is too far deep down the field. So usually the linebacker here is the one who has to make a play, and the greatness of having a very fast linebacker is hopefully he can get over there quickly, but he also has to make the read quickly. Well, watch how on this play, you do see that right here, I mean, he's already stepping over. He's already figured this out. Watch as he runs underneath. The ball is going to be thrown underneath, but he makes an immediate tackle, and they're not able to gain much at all. That is very good stuff from Awusa Koromora. And again, it's not necessarily about can you do this stuff. This is something I feel like I talk about in all of my videos is, yes, it's great that he can do this stuff, but what you kind of want even more is to do it consistently. And I would say that Awusa Koromora does do this kind of thing consistently, and that's to me why I think that he, you know, while maybe the numbers and in, in sort of the advanced stats aren't overwhelmingly in his favor, to kind of always say that he's like a solid like to good linebacker, I think he's only going to get better, though. I think he's already improving basically week after week, year after year, and I wouldn't be shocked if he can kind of really take the next step next year and turn into a, a great linebacker, because I think he's good as of right now. To me, I, I like the, the film that I see with him, because again, uh, you know, sometimes with linebackers, people just, you know, look at the, uh, the splash plays or they just look at, okay, how consistently do you win? I think both are important. And to me, he's a guy who can do both. So yeah, those are my thoughts on JOK. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.